स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good afternoon, everybody. We are going to resume our sessions on precision oncology. We have seen all the earlier four classes, a very thorough in depth of the basics of cancer biology, and then we have moved on to study on the hallmarks of cancer. In the basics of cancer, we have just got introduced into the proto oncogenes. We have introduced the suppressor genes. Then we went on to study what exactly the real aberrations that happen in a DNA or sequence or in the chromosome for a for a cancer to to occur. In the hallmarks of cancer, we have gone into the full in depth details of the different eight hallmarks, and then what exactly how each hallmark will continue to play its role or it's playing its vital role in the process of a cancer occurring or in a tumor progression and invasion. Okay, now slowly, like it's all it has been like you know we now thoroughly know what exactly uh, it's like. It's not like a single hallmark, and it is not like a chain or a circle of hallmarks event. Even a single hallmark or a, a, a different orchestration of different hallmarks is required for a cancer to occur or a genetic. As we basically know, cancer is a result of genetic changes. is a it is a more of um cancer occurrence now slowly we were, we have just really know what exactly the molecular mechanisms leading to the tumor genesis or oncogenesis now slowly we go into the what is the molecular mechanism of carcinogenesis this is absolutely a little bit not very different from the earlier ones whatever sessions we have gone through but we will see what exactly the role of a carcinogen or a mutant mutant here so if you recollect in our first class what we said is like we know a very perfect code of a dna sequence we know that a to z it's a perfect code or whatever it should be in a perfect code which has been totally getting uh, passed on from hereditary or from the stromatic genes to form a perfect to maintain the homeostasis of the whole system now suppose this code is not is not read well or is this code is mutated by means of an uh, ionizing radiation or a, by means of an uh, x ray or a chemical how does this alter the whole cancer how does it hold out outcome the uh, alter the outcome of the process of a cancer so this is all what we have learned before so now slowly we'll get introduced to another term here is what is a carcinogen is molecular processes involved in carcinogenesis this is we will be for further saying just see. so for example let's start basically what exactly is a basic definition of a carcinogen it is an agent that is capable through single or multiple exposures of providing an initial insult or an initial damage which promotes the selective growth advantage of altered cells or cells which are aberrant and this generates this and as a result of which lesions are generated during progression and which could be resulting in malignancy this is by far a very simple straight forward definition of what exactly we know what is a carcinogen what are these carcinogens basically we are hearing about this term so much nowadays much every time we associate cancer and carcinogen so well together what exactly how can you really eliminate or what do the what do you really i mean how do you really can you by elimination of carcinogen do you totally completely avoid cancer yes so any agent that significantly increases tumor in, uh, incidence by any route not necessarily inhalation by exposure to skin or by through oral or whatever this can it can, that agent can be called a carcinogen now let's slowly shift let's get back to our history classes you know so i would really like to say not no more of the molecular or whatever even though this is a precision oncology it's a, it is supposed to be to we it is the we have really de in depth the de dealt about so many of molecular mechanisms pathways in the earlier few four sessions so now what exactly how do they identify this chemical carcinogens so what happened just go back to your olive Were twist, you know, when he was doing, just go back to that um, uh, particular uh, 
novel where he was cleaning the chimney fraud the those because it's a british setup that whole story or that novel is you know what, what happens is like apart from that there was a lot of incidents of scotal cancers especially in men during their childhood days who had ended up cleaning chimneys were like now based on that uh, now uh, po- this uh, this particular person who is called the father of carcinogenesis studies uh, perkewell pot what uh, he has uh, said that uh, he proposed that the causative agent was chimney soot that remained lodged in the furrowed folds of scotal skin and uh, his observation was the first but uh, then he he, re- he was eerily correlated between the occupational cancer one that is what is occupational cancer one that is caused by a specific agents in the workplace for example the chimney sooth here uh, because scotal ca- cancer it could have was thought to develop in childhood uh, it was in 1978 the, after that a law was enacted it is see just imagine it's almost uh, 100 years after this uh, observation you know that boys under the age of 18 they should not be as working as chimney sweep they then slowly they had uh, brought in some mechanical uh, devices to clean uh, this, this this all happened during the industrial Revol- revolution in they were now able to relate an occupational hazard and a cancer just imagine what ima- what a tremendous uh, observation it is that itself had led to know when you know the cause and effect in a cancer disease then the law was uh, not in, uh, not reinforced until 1875 it was almost took 100 years you know for uh, from that initial report to make it as a law meanwhile uh, yamagiwa and ishikawa they re- they reported the first success, uh, uh, successful induction of cancer by the repeated uh, exposure of your rabbit ears to coal tar so they just expose the rabbit ears to the coal tar and this for coal tar uh, contains polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons so then again some more carcinogens then cancer then cancer so i'm sure to the, if you come to this particular uh, image you all must be very 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 familiar it's your x ray discoveries whether uh, so now uh, how did what happened when ronjan made it you all know the whole story this suddenly in the early 19th century there was an increase in incidence of uh, skin cancer among people working with x rays or maybe some aberrant skin lesions so that also okay when that is the time when the use of x ray was getting more especially in for dental purposes and uh, you know so people were like then suddenly this is also then by slowly they have a this x ray is also a potential hazard so so then what happened this particular jane clunet uh, edward jade clunet to test whether x rays alone can cause cancer in experimental animals what did they do he uh, irradiated four rats so repeat uh, with uh, repeated with re- repeating the treatment soon as soon as the radiation induced alterations had healed and he did this for a period of over 14 months now uh, so what happens on only two and uh, among the two which animals which survived so there was invasive cancer developed although those uh, induction of uh, cancer which preceded was uh, those reported by fibigner and by emma giva clunet this has been a uh, been regarded as an accomplishment and then uh, it's even though it's like a verification of your previous clinical observations so now just coming back so quickly we know that so just a brief history of chemical carcinogens in 1567 uh, paracelsus suggested there was a wasting disease of miners which might be attrib- uh, attributed to exposure to uh, arsenic sulfide then in uh, 1761 john hill noted that the nasal cancer it occurred in some people uh, who uh, used snuff excessively and then in 1859 you know bioson uh, described oral cancer in tobacco smokers this was all the small, bigger breakthroughs in uh, for the history of uh, chemical carcinogens as i said before uh, pavical peyot in 1775 he uh, he had uh, correlated the cancer of uh, that uh, with the work in uh, chim- in the chimney sweeps and that that is mostly in men who have worked in their earlier childhood days so ren has uh, reported uh, an increased instance of bladder uh, cancer in 
uh, aniline dye workers in Germany. So now this uh, there is like there is a major carcinogen is now believed to be uh, to naphthalamine. So now if you just see in UK, Germany, now slowly is this epidemiology of cancer. Now is cancer exactly you relate cancer to your occupation epidemiology of cancer. So now we will really going through this very fantastic term cancer epidemic. Uh, maybe once when we talk about our lung cancer in further in detail you know now lung cancer is your epidemic in uh, is uh, in the current Asia. So we will really talk about it how can it be how can uh, so for example you have your asbestos linings. This is how there is an increase in uh, cancer incidence where in countries where there is using where there is more usage of asbestos. So then again in, along with the history as I mentioned work with radium the incidence of skin cancer by repeated x-ray burns is reported. Then again some more group have went to show the report of induction of sarcoma and rights by x-ray x-ray radiation. So this also we have discussed for uh, painting the coal tar uh, uh, on the rabbit ears. Then uh, th that it was like uh, in uh, then further what exactly we've defined what exactly are um, carcinogens. So now uh, we will uh, slowly know uh, what exactly should you have the key carcinogen. What exactly are the characteristics? It should be elect electrophilic or metabolically activated to electrophiles. It should be genotoxic. We will refer uh, all these terms, we will just get used to it in this whole course of uh, session. It refers to genotoxic means it refers to an agent that induces a DNA damage, but this damage may necessarily or may not be necessarily be processed by the cell into you know mutation. I will slowly explain how this whole thing is uh, led through. Now, one of the char uh, characteristic of a carcinogen, it should be a genotoxic and it need not necessarily be a genotoxic. That means even if it is not altering the DNA, it still it can continue to be a carcinogen. So, and this cartogen uh, gen should be able to alter DNA repair or cause genomic instability. So, this is very, very uh, important. As you remember, your hallmarks of uh, cancer when we were discussing the different DNA repair, uh, repair mechanisms and then uh, how this, uh, then this carcinogens should be able to, uh, it will may not be, should be able to bypass or it sh if it is altering the DNA re repair mechanism, yes, it falls into the category of the carcinogen. It should be able to induce epigenetic alterations, it should induce uh, oxidative stress, it should induce chronic inflammation. Please recollect all our hallmarks of cancer where we have discussed about how the uh, chronic uh, inflammation and the, uh, this particular uh, carcinogens uh, cancer is related. It should be immunosuppressive, it should be able to downplay all your host immuno regulatory mechanisms so that it can uh, overtake. And then this one of the key characteristic of uh, a carcinogen should be able to mod modulate receptor mediated effects. And can this carcinogens really cause immortalization? Yes, some of them. And this uh, characteristics of the carcinogen should be to alter cell proliferation, cell data, uh, nutrient supply. So, if an uh, agent is found to induce DNA damage, it is called a genotoxin or a genotoxin. And uh, it is to be shown that the agent also induces mutations in mutagenicity assay, which we will see the AIMS assay, and it can be defined as mutagen. Uh, so, if this cartogen, uh, carcinogen is able to cause mutations, you can define it as a classify it as mutagen. As I said, uh, electrophiles are electron seeking molecules that commonly form addition products and uh, generally referred to as adducts. So, with cellular macromolecules, these adducts, these electrophiles usually form adducts with uh, DNA, RNA li uh, lipids and uh, proteins. Some of these carcinogens are directly uh, direct acting uh, electrophiles whereas other requires uh, some process transformation by process called as metabolic activation. Please keep in mind some of these carcinogens could be really in inert stage whenever in the chemically they could be inert. They may not be very active for example a benzene or anything it may not be immediately you your, your skin makes a contact with it. It is not like some of them may not be carcinogen but only when they are metabolized into the body by the action of your uh, uh, cytokines and all that. So as we will see they will become active 
activate it. So, the classic uh, examples of chemical agents that uh, to become carcinogenic are your polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and benzene. These uh, usually are inert by themselves. So, uh, how do you classify your chemical carcinogens like your genotoxic, non-genotoxic, simple. And this is a very crucial uh, component to assess here yeah, into uh, assess the, the risk assessment for this particular chemicals and drugs whatever we use in the common day to day life. However, uh, I mean it is not like uh, investigating carcinogenic uh, mechanisms, there is I mean it is there is a always a scientific uh, challenge you know. For example, and always this classification is not very every time agreed upon and in it most uh, uh, and it is based on the carcinogen's mode of action exactly. So, many some people even function uh, categorize this chemical carcinogens according to the uh, function uh, function and their mechanisms of action and also according to their environment of, of uh, DNA as being genotoxic and non-genotoxic such as your mitogenic and cytogenic. This is the like the properties for your genotoxic are like they possess the ability to simple damage DNA. They can lead to mutations in critical genes which, re which results in development of cancer which we have seen all that we have discussed all that how proto oncogenes get activated to a uh, oncogene and we have seen how the uh, different uh, cell cycle genes are being uh, altered and uh, we, we really know how, how the gene sequence is alteration is leading to the development and progression of cancer. So, now like you know. Uh, so, for example, uh, if a chemical uh, it uh, undergoes bioactivation to an electrophilic intermediate and eventually producing DNA addicts in uh, target cells, it reproducibility gives positive results in the series of your uh, in vitro genotoxic uh, tests. And this particular genotoxic uh, it induces genetic damage of target cells in short term in vivo assays. This is very very important for uh, even uh, even like for example your UV light and all that you know they really induced your lot of uh, genetic damage for the target cells in the uh, this particular in vivo assays. So, genotoxic carcinogens are those chemicals or metabolites and they able to induce cancer by the direct interaction or direct alteration of the genetic material of a target cells. And these carcinogens they expect a direct analogy between their substrate and activity and their mutagenesis in vitro assays are way and in and they need not even uh, I mean they may not even need high doses also or sometimes even they need high doses also and may affect various animal species and in and uh, Injured, I mean, this particular genotoxic agents may not be uh, like, for example, your ETBR, ethidium bromide, which is the regular RAP chemical we use. Uh, it is, uh, it will cause a lot of effect in very animal species and injure diverse organs. What are DNA addicts? What, how do this genotype? Uh, how do these uh, genotoxic carcinogens? Uh, they, uh, they cause DNA addicts. These are but nothing but your covalent bonds which are uh, established with uh, macromolecules and if not they are not uh, removed by your regular uh, repair mechanisms and if they are not removed prior to DNA replications. These adducts may progress, they will lead to mutations, they will result in mutations. If these mutations are occurring in your cruise crucial oncogenes like your RAS or whatever your P53s and whatever you know. Uh, so, or in the tumor suppressor genes any of that you know uh, which uh, and these which we, we have seen that they control your cell development and your cells control cell proliferation right. So, uh, cancer development will definitely follow. So, uh, adduct repair is usually coordinated by numerous enzyme and is controlled by different genes. It may be done via the excision of those bases or nucleotides by combined repair, mismatch repair and direct damage. This detection of this abduct suggests that chemical carcinogens where they are totally, they are able to, uh, they have been absorbed and they are acting in the DNA level. When you come to this non-genotoxic, you know, they do not damage DNA. They alter the balance between cellular growth and death. And they do not affect direct DNA directly and they may not be able to raise uh, adducts 
and are negative for on your uh, some of your mutagen city tests which but they are capable of inducing cancer by a secondary mechanism which may not be related to direct dna damage so lots of non genotoxic chemicals positive in animal studies exhibit no uh, genotoxic effects in this series of test systems they include specific target lesions characterized by they will be will cause lesions which is by cell proliferation or sustained cellular hyperfunction and in short term animal models these uh, non geotoxic agents they produced hormonal metabolic phys pathophysiological effects underlying the occurrence of target lesions in a series of mechanistic studies this actually it's just exactly what i was trying to tell for example you have a genotoxic uh, carcinogen it will uh, have a direct and an indirect uh, effect so you have the erythrophile molecule and then once this is going to uh, it will help in the creation of your adux the dam dna damage cells supposing the your dna electro repair mechanisms whatever we discussed in the earlier things they get alert you end up with the normal cells and then uh, suppose the dna replication uh, and it's like uh, you have something called i will tell in my in my further proxy we have called in the process of carcinogenesis we have the initiation promotion and the progression you have the first step is your dna damaged where and where the dna this damaged dna goes through a dna replication and then you have what is called initiated cell with a mutant dna sequence hope i'm clear so and then suppose this dna damage when again your apoptosis systems come into play and then that maybe could be that could go through the apoptosis uh, cycle and it could be eliminated this whole per cell per se is eliminated so chemical carcinogens may directly or indirectly be converted to uh, electrophilic molecules that interact with your dna depending on the cell injury level that is your formation of your dna uh, adx a uh, different ways of cellular response may occur with low damage levels so suppose if it's a very low damage level yes the repair systems will come into play and then cells or maybe the cells can undergo program cells cells program cell death like your apoptosis however due to under cellular replicative pressure if this particular goes through replication then the, the damaged dna will allow your mutation thus initiated cells carry permanent and heritable dna changes or they carry the mutated dna changes that may which this initiated cell will be a predisposition to cancer development first example uh, this is like just refer back of how the initial whole thing uh, goes first this slide shows like carcinogenic um, exposure after exposure it gets absorbed then distributed then as i said the inactive one will be to be activated and then you have your biotransformation either it happens in the liver kidneys and all that after active in and if it's not activated some of these carcinogens or chemicals which are not activated they will be excreted out via your regular uh, process like through the uh, kidneys livers and all the lung But suppose if it gets activated no so you have your uh, genotoxic mechanisms being coming into play yes, such as your uh, dna uh, adux your chromosome break breakage your fusions deletions miss segregation non dissection just recollect in the basics of cancer biology the first class we have discussed about all this and then even after activation even it also has a non genotoxic mechanism such as your uh, which may not directly affect your gene so what will happen here you will have your inflammation activating immunosuppressive then your ROS and RNS these are very very vital uh, compounds we will discuss later on and then you have your receptor activation and then the epigenetic signaling all this will lead to altered gene signal transduction and then uh, which would uh, lead to hypoabnormality and then genetic instability and then the loss of uh, proliferation control and then and then they are not uh, resist they are resistance to apoptosis so these are all typical hallmarks of your cancer so suppose this is how a typical uh, carcinogen it can uh, it is the how a carcinogen will totally 
lead to its affected progression of the cancer. This, uh, this figure is a very good example. Some of this metabolic, for the metabolic, just remember here for this particular activation. So, first after absorption, how does it activation for genotoxic compounds? Some directly act like alkylating agents. They need metabolic activation. So, usually how do they go through? They go through the cytochrome, cytochrome P450 enzyme system such as your PAH, aflatoxin, vinyl chloride, PHIPs, NNKs. And then one more example is like your metabolism of benzene in bone marrow. So, as I said before, products of this metabolism are electrophilic and DNA reactive. So, is a mutation and a carcinogen or can a mutagen? What is a mutation? We know an alteration exactly, we have seen it before, exactly an agent which can cause a change in a coding sequence, a mutant which can cause. So, that is a carcinogen and a mutation, mutant, mutagen are the same. So what, how did they first go on to address it? As we know that nuclear genome is a dynamic system. It has got, uh, it is, um, it is at different uh, levels of biomolecular uh, activities. For example, this transcription, chromatin accessibility and then and then uh, accessibility. So, it is a very heterogeneous level where there is nucleotide context and there is DNA repair mechanisms. So, there is this, um, all this is susceptible to mutagenesis across the genome. Oh, there is a very high frequency of chromosomal um, abrasion and which is correlated with the increased risk of, risk of malignancy. So, cell transformation by your oncogenic viruses. If you recollect, we were discussing about your HPV 16, 18 and their E6, E7, how they are playing a role in the uh, formation of, uh, into the progression of your cervical uh, cancer uh, carcinoma in situ or invasive carcinoma. Or invasive carcinoma. So, these mutations, uh, what happens? Uh, cancer uh, uh, exerts on a, exists on a continuum. There is always uh, continuity. Uh, for example, the, uh, the for example the cells transformation by this oncogenic viruses implies a change in the genetic information. Now, what happens? Mutations arise as a result of repair and replication errors due to endogenous processes and environmental factors. These uh, mutations are uh, they are the substrate. So please keep in mind they are the substrate for the uh, the uh, they are a prelude for the neoplasal uh, clonal expansion of the cancer cells and they confirmed uh, and always these uh, mutations they have been conferring uh, advantage they either uh, being it in a proliferative or a sub, sub uh, survival advantage or uh, dna misma they convert they usually confer a advantage so on the cancer cells and uh, or maybe on to the host uh, host cells and that is why it is naturally selected so, a malignant phenotype is inherited in the cell line. Please remember, uh, again back to our first Darwin's uh, theory, whatever we were discussing. In the cell line, cell line uh, for example, a cancer cell line has a malignant phenotype. Uh, if you see here, like you have the first right from the zero, uh, maybe in the between this year, over a span of zero to 20 years, there could be an initial DNA damage and then a mutation. Then you see still it is like this particular thing is able to grow. This is uh, getting into a small self-sufficient growth uh, cells. There is increase in number. And over the uh, in, uh, year, these cells, you know, they are getting resistance to apoptosis. And then further, they will slowly go on in invasive. So, in this process, again, as you remember, um, there will be uh, increase in uh, tumor mass. And as they increase in tumor plants, you will have your uh, angiogenesis. Uh, and then once uh, it increases, they will metastasize. This is how uh, the uh, how you uh, you link your mutation and the ca carcinogenesis. Genotoxicity to pre-neoplastic uh, biology to oncology. So, Bovary to first, the first to suggest that chromosomal changes lead to cancer. And in 1916, you know, uh, Tyre introduced the term somatic mutations. Most chemical carcinogens are mutation, mutants, but it is a very uh, good analog here. 
but not all mutagenesis may be carcinogens. There is a why it may be and most carcinogens and mutagens are strongly electrophoric uh, electrophilic reactants or uh, ionizing or UV radiations and most chemical they cause lesions in DNA and defects and these and this particular uh, defects are associated with uh, high risk of cancer. Very one important term here again which we will be talking here is epigenetic mechanisms involved in chemical carcinogenesis. So, here you have a chemical which is uh, it goes through metabolism and it goes through reactive intermediate and then a DNA abduct is there and then a DNA repair mechanism it works functionally absolutely nothing to worry everything it is just a normal there is nothing big. Coming here you know you have a chemical metabolism then you have the reactive intermediate the DNA abduct and here you know no DNA repair when your DNA repair mechanism is not there you have a mutation in proto oncogene or in a tumor suppressor gene or maybe here also it could even happen through via your uh, inherent uh, inherited mutations. So, now coming to you the endogenous metabolism where the uh, reactive uh, intermediates such as your reactive oxygen species ROS and then you have the DNA addict and then the damage and but still if there is no DNA repair mechanism here with the ROS or whatever you know still the mutation progresses and after that you know there is an uh, increase in expression of your oncogene proteins and there is decrease in expression of tumor suppressor and then uh, your normal uh, cellular signaling which is influenced by endogenous and uh, exogenous uh, variables as it goes through it goes through progress what will happen you have increased in cell proliferation decrease in apoptosis decrease in differentiation then we in all this major hallmarks which lead to the progression of cancer we will see there is malignant uh, conversion and then there is carcinoma cells. This is how you know first example like uh, epigenic it refers to all your stable changes all stable changes in your DNA on gene expression and chromatic uh, organization. Uh, so, for example, this genetic changes may be they not be necessarily with uh, DNA sequence il itself and they can be mitotically inher inherited over cell divisions. So, epigenic phenomena including your uh, genomic imprinting, X chrome, chromosome inactivation, your uh, uh, global reconfiguration of the DNA methylome and changes to chromatin, uh, all this uh, uh, like your histone modification pattern occur during development and chronic uh, and, uh, and contribute to the lineage specific epigenome modification uh, patterns. And this is maintained all this particular in a normal cell, it is maintained over the lifetime of an organism. So, but when you have the carcinogenic all this could be altered like carcinogenic such as your chemical, your uh, uh, physical, biological agents they deregulate your common epigenetic mechanism. Please make a note of this very important term. So, so then uh, as I said you know so chemicals can be metabolized usually you have the reactive intermediates that form an abduct with your DNA. So, sometimes if this uh, abduct is not repaired as I said it goes through the mutations. So, combine these two mechanisms you know here can lead to uh, increased uh, expression of an onco oncogene or a decreased expression of a tumor express here these particular two mechanisms. This and uh, further there is a normal cellular uh, signaling. So, here that can be uh, influenced by the endogenous or exogenous. So, you have your uh, endogenous and your exogenous uh, variables that collectively alter major pathways that regulate all this particular process and ultimately leading to cancer. This is your outline of, uh, so it is uh, similar to whatever we were talking of it before. For example, here uh, your endogenous process like your ROS, your uh, lipid peroxidation, your amino acid metabolism and then your exposure to uh, like uh, the, to this particular will cause the DNA. For example, DNA damage, endogenous uh, genotoxic compounds. 
and whereas the exposure to your somatic compounds like example like your food your consumer products in places in your workplace like like maybe some other for example you are exposed to your strong chemical in your workplace or anything it's not like just not to be alarmed or anything you know sometimes in the cellular uptake and metabolism process it could be inactivated by a reaction with non dna targets but sometimes you know uh, after get if they cause the dna damage you know so there is an uh, increase in risk of uh, cancer that uh, for, and then uh, again after the dna damage again if your dna repair mechanisms and your cell cycle checkpoint activation recollect all your uh, cell cyclin uh, cdk cdk inhibitors all that which we were discussing so if these cell cycle checkpoints are all activated then uh, there is that apoptosis autophagy and senescence so then uh, at the same time if your dna damage and if there is a damage is tolerated uh, example like your your uh, transcription senses and all that then you they will be inheritance of the mutated cells so here you have the initiation and then here you are having your uh, promotion here so here again there is one at this particular point also you have again promotion you have the expansion the mutated initiation cells will be expanding it will be invading it will uh, have an autom uh, autonomous proliferation mechanism and again by the sense of your uh, repair mechanisms it could be eliminated by autophagy or by senescence in the mechanism or if it's not eliminated it will lead to malignant cancer cells so one very important uh, essay which we will be talking about now is your aims aims essay so first this is for evaluation of your carcinogenicity for example you come up with uh, new chemical compounds and you just or you would say it's an antibacterial or an antibiotic first thing you have to evaluate is it does it cause any harm to your normal cells or does it have the potential to uh, progress uh, to uh, cause cancer or the carcinogenicity capacity has to be assessed so this aims test you know it has been named after its developer bruce a names from at the university of california and berkeley this test uses bacteria it which is a it is a very as a sensitive biological uh, indicator of whether or not can a substance uh, cause a change in uh, dna so he started with a specific uh, bacterial strain like your uh, salmonella which uh, with doesn't uh, it uh, which has a mutation in its gene to or uh, to synthesize the amino acid histazine because of this defect in this particular gene this the bacteria can grow only on media which contains uh, either histidin or some substituents or when he exposed to this particular uh, the agent or this particular bacteria what he first did is he took a filter paper then took the uh, blotted the carcinogen onto this particular uh, field onto this particular filter paper and then uh, he uh, exposed to this uh, uh, bacteria to the filter paper containing the mutagen so that which can cause the change in your dna sequence then what happened then uh, many of the bacteria ended up with new mutation in the gene required for making histidine so what happened the number of colonies of so bacteria which cannot grow without histidine started in the absence of uh, in the which can it started growing if you expose this to some which is uh, if we had exposed this bacteria to a disk which contains uh, Uh, containing uh, which is not a mutagen for example a non a non carcinogenic one there were no changes in the histidine production of gene and the bacteria did not grow so there were less number of colonies this uh, aims or uh, aims test which uses salmonella typhi typhinarium is uh, is uh, which is a reverse mutation assay actually is uh, it is a short term test for identification of uh, carcinogens that cause uh, mutagenesis in bacteria as an end point so this is uh, it includes uh, mammalian metabolism to activate uh, it it needs act to activate to pro mutagenesis there sometimes you know uh, not very complete correlation has been observed you know found between carcinogens in animals and mutagenesis using the aims test so here uh, to detect this basically uh, 
he studied in requiring bacterial strain so it produce that produces a histidine independent strain by virtue of the effect of your uh, carcinogen on the dna sequence this is used in many of all your uh, toxicology labs and almost all new pharmaceutical substances and chemicals that uh, that are going to be to be in use for um, your uh, clinical studies or for clinical trials they have to be tested by this particular assay example here the lab rat river is homogenized you have the test compound when you mix the test compound with your lysate here the metabolic activation of the test compounds by the rat river enzyme uh, comes and this metabolic activity uh, activated uh, compound when it's added to your salmonella bacteria which is unable to grow in the absence of uh, histidine in cultures, um, culture medium it will grow whereas uh, sometimes uh, uh, that have uh, undergone and then uh, sometimes with or in the absence of a mutation when there is no mutation or if your compound is not carcinogenic or mutagenesis you will not have much number of colonies. This is a very important test in your drug discovery toxicology studies. So, genetic toxicity and carcinogenic here the standard uh, genetic toxicity testing as we have seen it allows for our uh, relative uh, simple and accurate detection of DNA damage which is caused by treatment with testing agents or else but for carcinogenicity it uh, you need to have evaluate the potential of this particular carcinogen or this particular chemical to induce tumor in animal models so usually genetic uh, the genetic um, toxicity testing batteries what do they consist of usually a bacterial gene uh, mutation assay as we have discussed before and then uh, in vitro mammalian mutation or a chromosome chromosome damage assay and then uh, an in vivo chromosome damage assay this is uh, this test battery is simple it is accurate and uh, economical and it's uh, hazard identification to, uh, on exposure to set of chemicals which have the potential to cause dna damage and or or at the gene and chromosome level we can see whereas you know the potential of this particular chemicals to tum to induce carcinogenicity in, in animals it is a slightly a bit a cumbersome effort you know where it requires a two year bio assay in rats and um, mice and then uh, this uh, it requires two year exposure and uh, three concentrations of your uh, test agent and then you need to have your controls so some of the transgenic um, have been uh, uh, recent uh, have been uh, ca that cause uh, susceptible transgenic mice models such as p53 hras your have been evaluated and considered as your um, alternative so you have your transgenic uh, genes with its with or without this particular uh, uh, genes uh, mice models such as your p53 hras and uh, the, you consider it uh, test this particular carcinogen and you look for the outcome of this particular disease this potential of these chemicals to induce tumors such as that is your carcinogenicity uh, in animals and to extrapolate can you extrapolate whatever you do it animals yes can you extrapolate to humans this particular of its uh, carcinogenic in uh, say mouse model uh, debatable but still it is usually two years more than three years of time this mechanics uh, because of this uh, mechanistic association of dna damage and cancer and the practical implications of this particular carcinogenic assays you know this are this particular uh, genetic toxicity assays or they are very genotoxicity assays are they are very very vital they you will have uh, the non genotoxic mechanisms like your proliferation all that also uh, like your hormone changes nuclear hormone receptor activation all that which we have learned earlier we can uh, they can cause us to lead to a multi-stage process so as i mentioned before uh, there are many approaches which are to uh, for assessing mutational signatures this is uh, we will be reading a lot about it in this particular uh, ongoing classes actually so my mutational spectra for example your polynucleotide mutational sequ sequences this is your sequences they provide a lot of insight you know into the mutational process 
so for example your exome or your whole genome uh, sequencing of, of this particular tumor uh, population reflects the stomatic processes uh, operative in the founding cell of the most recent clonal sweep for uh, see, uh, please uh, remember keep in mind as we have been always telling it may not be necessarily suppose you take uh, melanoma or it may not be necessary a complete uh, homogeneous uh, tumor population it could be heterogeneous so each uh, it could be even a heterogeneous uh, mixture of different cells so what what happens from this uh, whatever they can take their single cells can be cloned from the cultured population and uh, they can be exposed to the mutations and then uh, and then they can assess the mutational signatures of this particular expanded cells the clonal uh, variants of those present in individuals that were not present in their parents this is again what uh, the pair, this particular um, mutational processes uh, suppose you have the clonal variants only in the children and it's not present only in their parents this uh, indicates the state of mutational process during gametogenesis or early embryogenesis. So, you can correlate. Then sequencing of your cloned cells or molecules from certain selection based mutagenesis. After you say for example, your uh, transgenic mice or whatever and then you expose them to your mutations and then uh, you take the tumor lesions and then uh, you go for sequencing. Can they can so maybe? Uh, so, uh, it is now possible uh, with this NGS, you can obtain mutational spectra from directly sequencing uh, of DNA from uh, or anything from any tissue or any site whatever. Now, what is carcinogenesis? It is a multi-stage process, simple thing, it has three steps, initiation, promotion, progression. So, carcinogenesis goes through three steps like your uh, initiation, promotion and progression. So, in the initiation stage, uh, we have the genotoxic chemicals, radiation, UV viruses, where there is an initiated, as I showed you in the first slide, there is an initiated cells. And with this initiation, there is clonal expansion and then where all your growth factors, everything will be, uh, all uh, will be for very good players to increase your Grow, growth of the cells. Then you will have the still it is in the confined where it is still in the in the promo, promotion stage you have the pre neoplastic lesions. Here you have your non genotoxic chemicals in play and then it you have the progression where your primary malignant. So, very nicely you can see how this particular uh, malignant tumor uh, will uh, form into a secondary tumors by the genetic uh, you know, there is genetic instability then there is suppressor gene loss and there is lot of gene amplification this is a two stage model of skin uh, carcinogenesis in mice during uh, the initial topical application of your uh, subcarcinogenic dosage of your uh, mutagenic uh, agent which uh, induces mutations in the target genes in keratinocytes uh, stem cells so what happens here for here, uh, for uh, two weeks, you know, there is metabolic uh, activation of uh, procarcinogens and uh, covalent binding to DNA. And then DNA repair or cell replication and fixation of mutation, it will happen. So, in your initial stages, there is a chance for it could be slightly reversible. So, uh, mutation induction in critical target genes happens. Example, it's your HRAS of stem cells in, in your bulge region of hair follicle or uh, basal compartment of interfollicular uh, epidermis. Here, you know, uh, so it could happen, the mutation. Then over the progression like, so first two weeks. Then uh, four from between your uh, 10 and uh, 40 weeks. Where, uh, so then it, after the end of two weeks, it will commence your uh, continual delivery of your promoting. You will continue to uh, inject the same uh, carcinogen and then uh, over that you have your increased DNA synthesis, then you have altered uh, gene expression or enzyme activities and then you ha uh, have this particular initial cell, whatever initial initiating uh, stem cell population, there is always complete expansion here. And then further on, you know, you have uh, more and more cells are getting uh, proliferated and then there is, there have to be maintained of this chronic cell proliferation and there, there is uh, outgrowth of clonal outgrowth. There is development of clonal outgrowth and then you have your diploid lesions. 
and further on you have the as they progress how does it happen here see between the 10 to 50 weeks what happens see first thing keep in mind here it is your sub uh, carcinogenic dosage of your see suppose you give it a carcinogen dose dose you know you will not be able to really observe the whole uh, effects of all this what you do is it's just a win-win situation you don't want your uh, mice to die at the same time uh, you want to really observe your uh, effect of this muti particular mutagen mutagen or your carcinogen on this particular mice so after this 20 30 you know slowly there is uh, initiation phase then then there's your promotion and then there is your progression what happens in progression phase here you have additional genetic events which occur st strictly like your aneuploidy then there is dysplasia and then this conversion of this papilloma to a squamous cell typical carcinoma happens and then there is invasion and metastasis so here also you can slowly see how the normal cells this is the histo this is a histo figure this is a normal cell and then you have your hypoplastic uh, epidermis then there is this papilloma and then your squamous cell this is just a two stage model of your skin uh, carcinogenesis in mice which is very well depicted here by giving a sublethal dose of your carcinogen and then here also again uh, the three stages you know of carcinogens like your uh, initiation promotion progression uh, you know they we can be studied here so here as i said before it is a bit reversible like normal cell to initiate itself yes there is a chance of reversible yes your repair mechanisms lie waken up and then there is a chance and then slowly from initiated cells there is promotion where you have your focal lesions like a papilloma and then here also sometimes apoptosis all this can go away and proliferation then it is when this progression so please keep it in mind your multi hit model here initiation promotion progression this is for the multi genic uh, multi step hepto, uh, hepatocarcinogenesis this is how it looks you have your initiation then your promotion progression and then your carcinoma uh, this is the typical uh, liver focus of altered hepatocytes here you can see and then uh, adenoma hepatocellular adenoma and then hepatocellular uh, hepatocellular carcinoma this uh, genotoxic carcinogen produces initiated cells first initially one cell uh, that's enough with a mutant genotype and uh, during promotion these cells can be uh, they will be stimulated these cells by their own uh, paracrine exocrine factors or what we have uh, discussed before they are stimulated to proliferate by tumor proliferating carcinogens to form clusters of initiated cells the form lesions are predisposed to progress into cancer that's a predisposition but further on uh, more exposure to this particular genotoxic and uh, tumor promoting suspense uh, you know more and more as they are getting there is there is uh, acceleration progression by increasing genomic instability and cell proliferation rate chemical or physical, uh, physical agents that can serve as initiating or promoting agents and their primary for a uh, molecular targets here so you have your benzol you have your uh, the dmba then you have your cisplatinum then which are which they uh, affect most of them they are uh, hras and then you have your promoting that is your tpa your benzoyl uh, per peroxide then your uv and then your really which here the initial molecular target or here the event associated it here is your protein kinase c and or your uh, uh, generates oxidative stress we will now move on to a very important uh, term or very important events which happen during the molecular mechanisms of carcinogenesis that is your generation of your reactive oxygen species that is your ROS. ROS are like uh, when there is an imbalance between the formation of reactive oxygen and or nitrogen uh, species and then uh, there is and they are uh, detoxified so once this ROS are generated they have to be uh, they are detoxified commonly and this is uh, referred to as if there is an imbalance it's referred to as oxidative stress so ROS are usually highly reactive intermediates of molecular 
oxygen. They are produced by a product of an endogenous metabolism. Metabolism of any uh, foreign substances also produces ROS and it, they, 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 these ROS are usually here are most um, potentially uh, genotoxic. So many of these uh, human and animal carcinogens, whatever we have seen the list, you know, they are capable of influencing uh, redox process and they are able to cause redox imbalance. They usually this ROS they arise from inflammation and they contribute to genomic insta instability along with uh, other free radical species. So oxidative damage is considered to be the major factor in the generation of mutations in DNA and more than 100 different you know more than 100 different DNA oxidative DNA addicts have been identified. There is uh, this oxidative damage uh, has been reported in more than uh, 200 uh, clinical uh, disorders including your uh, inflammatory bowel syndrome and of course cancer as well. So here you know uh, just pay attention here in normal cells this gives like uh, they have a fundamental role I want to show how this you know ROS have a fundamental role in cancer cells. In normal cells green cells you know uh, cells which are under uh, normal homeostatic balance here. Redox is so there is a basal level of ROS and there is a basal level of your antioxidants. So, but uh, everything is normal. But uh, suppose you know there is increase in uh, like your cancer script, like whatever you know your exposure to carcinogens or maybe smoking, which we often associate with a high risk of cancer, and then obesity, then UV light exposure. What happens is like uh, there is uh, increase in ROS uh, levels, which induces you know. Uh, DNA damage which includes uh, genetic uh, instability and then uh, there is uh, precancerous regions and then you have your ROS elevations and your antioxidants decrease. Here your uh, antioxidant activity, the DNA repair mechanisms, everything they will be in uh, decrease. See here you see the slightly the red cells. The T, T suppressor uh, proteins your, such as your P53, they are all been activated in response to cancer inducing stimuli, repairing DNA mutations and uh, those uh, inducing the transcription of the onco uh, active oncogenic genes. Now further on what happens, how do they uh, do that? These pathways uh, are often whenever there is uh, your repair mechanisms are uh, insufficient, uh, ROS and, uh, and your uh, antioxidant levels uh, uh, rise creating a new and altered redox uh, balance thereby favoring the activation of your intracellular uh, uh, oncogenic signaling pathways and maintaining the functionality of cellular components in cancer cells like this the red cells here. The, these pathways are you know uh, are often related to increased uh, cell proliferation and survival and cell metastasis and uh, cytokine secretion and drug resistance. So high levels of ROS there is increase in antioxidants and there is a altered redox uh, in uh, equilibrium as you can see and which will lead to increased proliferation uh, cell survival. And so finally an excess uh, increase in ROS due to overwhelmed antioxidant system provokes a loss in redox balance or there is a complete redox imbalance thereby uh, inducing your uh, apoptosis and necrosis here. Can you see this? So these pathways are often related to increased cell pr proliferation, survival metastasis, cytokine secretion and drug resistance. So, there is an uh, so pure, at this point you know activation of your p53 activation of your uh, p53 due to severe cellular damage can induce cell cycle arrest senescence and cell death. Here you can see the stray cells probably uh, which can suggest a differential response to ROS uh, response depending on the oncogenic background and on the p53 status of the tumor. So they have here I want to ascertain that or ROS they have a very prime role in cancer. Here you can see if your ROS levels are low basal ROS levels are it is in the normal scenario whereas your tumor promoting ROS levels are again increased. Then the tumor suppressor again the high levels of 
ROS, the redox equilibrium is lost and thereby, thereby activation of P53 due to cellular can induce cell cycle arrest. Uh, quickly, we will discuss about the signaling pathways which are mediated by the ROS here. They have a fundamental role in cancer they can inactivate what we call it as a red burst or activate here you see the green burst. Uh, ROS activates your NF kappa B pathway. NF B kappa B pathway they by, by uh, favoring the dimerization of uh, and uh, inducing phosphorylation of the NF kappa B inhibitors which are la later degraded by your proteasome and induce phosphorylation of the P50, P65 dimers. These are all your different pathways you know which are uh, totally altered. One more RAS also favors the oxidation of your protoyl uh, hydroxylases PDHs, prolyl hydro which are the key to the uh, union of the VHL protein with your uh, HIF uh, 1 alpha hypoxy uh, inducing factor which we usually collect inducing its uh, ubiquitination and degradation in the proteasome and degradation in the proteasome. So, again uh, you have your uh, the D here, please see the D. I am zooming it for you. Here, uh, TRX is oxidized in the presence of H2O2 and separates from uh, inducing phosphorylation of your MMK, which in turn phosphorylates JNK or P38, facilitating uh, the which face transcription of genes related to cell proliferation and differentiation, apoptosis, inflammation. All this we have seen, right? and stress response. Finally, you even you have your P10 phosphate uh, is oxidized and inactivated by your ROS which promotes the activation of your P13K AKT pathway related to cell survival and proliferation signaling as well as your protein biosynthesis. Here if you see, here you can clearly see how well all this particular uh, signaling pathways are well uh, influenced by the presence of H2O2 or your ROS in your particular and they all play a very key role in the outcome of your cancer. Just a quick note for the different chemical uh, carcinogens like you know you have your uh, polycyclic compound aromatic hydrocarbons like your uh, benzopyrene and then um, which forms uh, you know what is it the role it has uh, it forms adducts with your uh, purine basis of DNA mainly resulting in invasiveness. So, it affects your, uh, these are the different, this uh, slide gives the chemical list of your different uh, chemical dyes and, and the uh, mechanism of their actions, you know, and then where exactly do they affect. So, usually uh, ROS is very, very important in your, uh, for the outcome of your cancer. Usually, it is always said that, you know, uh, increase in consumption of your fruit or your vegetables, you know, which they have a lot of high, uh, of your high quantity of your anti-cancer, you know, has been, ex uh, has been associated to increase in cancer scenario. For example, uh, your dietary polyphenols, your xanthones, glucosylides and your uh, sulfur and effins have been shown to have antioxidant effects on, on the or, uh, or they are able to modulate your antioxidant effects. Uh, it is still, you know, uh, remains to be established whether their cancer preventive effects uh, are mostly mediated by their antioxidant properties or by the combination of the cancer suppressive effects. This is all in the new process of uh, development and uh, still in the pro process of uh, uh, conceptualization. Finally, you know exposure to UV, uh, UV light, we all are aware that it is going to cause cancer, right? Skin cancer. So, exposure of cells to UV radiation is to directly known to induce uh, um, DNA uh, oxidation by the formation of uh, uh, 1, O2 and 8 hydroxy deoxyguanosine it is called A2HDG which is the main production of which is the main product of your guanine oxidation and and it uh, by activating photosensitizers such as your bilirubin which can lead to ROS by activation of bilirubin it can lead to ROS formation by activating your ROS and RNS producing enzymes like your NOS or, or uh, NOS or by inhibiting antioxidant enzymes activity such as your 
CAT. This there is um, a very important all this examples need I wanted to show highlight it because there is a lot of evidence which indicates that uh, there is an important role for uh, ROS in carcinogens upon exposure to your genotoxins. So, probably suggesting the important role of your antioxidants or dietary natural products uh, uh, in the importance of their when when you cannot avoid your exposure to the genotoxins, maybe this antioxidants could play a role in providing uh, having a favorable outcome or not uh, progress outcome for progression of the cancer. Now, we have seen we have come to the end of this session and we have really seen uh, what exactly you know uh, uh, come back to my first slide where I was talking about the history. Earlier when those people uh, uh, when used to in uh, UK especially when they used to go to the cold mines they used to carry a uh, caged uh, canneries that is with birds in them that uh, into the mine tunnels you know that when there is uh, uh, during the excavation process when there is the uh, built of this uh, dangerous gas such as your uh, carbon monoxide or anything you know collected in the mine this ga these gases would first uh, initially kill the birds and then the miners would be affected with something uh, uh, obnoxious release of let's uh, run away so that was a warning to uh, to exit the tunnels immediately. Now, do we have such kind of a, um, now we do not, uh, we cannot afford for such kind of a mechanism, but still you know, uh, just relate my NGS slide, you know, how we can identify the effect of a uh, carcinogen on the DNA sequence. For example, I want to leave you with this story like you know, uh, what if we have taken this birth uh, DNA sequence and then go about it. I am sure you know lot fold mechanistic studies could have been unfolded. This uh, with this we conclude this particular uh, session the molecular mechanisms of carcinogenesis and we will meet up with a different session on uh, precision oncology in our next class. Thank you.